With the passing of Chaos format, massive changes were about to hit the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. The first ever true ban list would come following the US Nationals in 2004, being one of the longest running traditions of the game. This would lead us into early 2005 and the final format of the DM era before we'd enter a new age of the game. I'm the Law YGO, this is Retro Retrospective, and today we jump back to SJC Columbus 2005 and the final format of the DM era, Warrior Format. Psst, hey, real quick, did you know that only about 20% of people who watch my content are subscribed? If you like what you see, leave a like, comment, and subscribe below. Thanks, it really does help a lot. With the passing of Chaos Format, the first ever true ban list would go into effect, setting the stage for Warrior Format with its changes. For the first ever banned cards, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Sangan, Witch of the Black Forest, Yadakarasu, Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Harpy's Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Raigeki, United We Stand, Imperial Order, and Mirror Force were all banned moving forward to reset the meta. In addition to these, Dark Magician of Chaos, Morphing Jar, Protector of the Sanctuary, Mystical Space Typhoon, and Torrential Tribute were all limited. With these changes, the meta as it was known was completely changed overnight. As with the two most important cards in Chaos Control being banned, being CED and Yada, lists would have to change and adapt one way or the other. In addition to the first ever true ban list, there was also a series of releases for this particular format, starting with the exclusive pack on August 1st of 2004. This pack was released to go alongside the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie in theaters around the same time, and as such, the pack was full of movie tie-in garbage, such as the Sphinx Monsters, Rare Metal Dragon, and Familiar Knight. There was, however, one particular card that stood out among the rest as being insanely powerful in the right circumstances. Return from the different dimension could, for the cost of half of your life points, special summon as many banished monsters as possible, but banish them all again at the end of the turn. This card could already be considered good at the time, but would take a while to become absolutely broken in the game, though the potential was clearly already there and would be taken advantage of by some players. Shortly after, the Collectible 10 Series 1 would release in early September, bringing more promos that would do nothing like Total Defense Shogun and Insect Queen, but it did bring Blade Knight, a light warrior that could be 2000 attack if you had one or less cards in hand, and a gated flip monsters that destroyed in battle. This was easily one of the best light warrior targets in the game now, and as such would find itself slotted into various brews in this format with the nerfs to chaos present. Next was the main set Soul of the Duelist, released in October 1st of 2004, which was interesting as it was the first main set to be a one-to-one -one for the Japanese release, as previous main sets were actually a combination of two Japanese sets, meaning the card pool was roughly half of what we had gotten used to at this point. As such, there aren't as many power cards in the set, but there are still a couple. Horus the Black Flame Dragon was the first of the level series of monsters, which all had conditions to summon the next stage directly from deck with their upgrade effects. Horus level 6 could not be targeted by spells and leveled up into 8 by destroying a monster in battle, with level 8 being able to negate any spell that activates of the user's choice. Dark Mimic level 1 would almost never see play with its higher level variants, mainly being used as a flip effect draw 1 for resource generation. Mystic Swordsman level 2 would be useful primarily for its effect to clear set monsters without flipping them, allowing the user to dispose of flip effects and floaters with a searchable warrior. Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke would also be able to remove defense monsters, but only if they were already face up, making it a lot less useful than Mystic Swordsman, though he was a light for chaos strategies. Mobius the Frost Monarch was the newest Monarch threat, able to blow up two pieces of back row on summon, which had become more useful with the banning of Feather Duster and the limiting of Mystical Space Typhoon. Minecrush would find play to counter out strategies with heavy amounts of searching power, but wouldn't be as useful at this particular point in time. Shortly after Soul of the Duelist, Destiny Board Travelers would release near the end of October of 2004, bringing the promo DD Assailant, being a less useful warrior lady, but still seeing play as his effect was still very useful. The next core set, Rise of Destiny, would release at the beginning of December 2004, and similar to Soul of the Duelist before it was about half the size of previous core sets, only bringing a handful of useful cards. The creator was one of these, being the cover card of the set and being able to special summon a monster from grave, being a build around card, though not as heavily played as you would expect. Thessalos the Firestorm Monarch rips a card out of the opponent's hand on Tribute Summon, burning the opponent if it's a monster, seeing play in some dedicated Monarch builds or in hand control. Pitch Black Warwolf gave you an option to stop the ever-present Sakuretsu armor, though would probably eat a removal before then. 
Fusilier Dragon was by far and away one of the more interesting pieces from this set, as it could be normal summoned without tributing by having its attack and defense, which would then return to normal if its effect were negated by a card like Skill Drain. Though Drain Beat was not quite popularized here, it absolutely was making steps forward. Back to Square 1 is an interesting piece of removal, being able to stack a monster onto the opponent's deck for the cost of a discard. It wouldn't be useful here, but would be heavily inspiring for a staple in the next format. Machine Duplication let you summon out two or more copies of any machine with 500 or less attack, which once again wouldn't be useful now, but would be easily broken in future formats as the machine pool grew. Lastly, Divine Wrath operates like a magic jammer for monster effects, which did come up from time to time. Finally, there was one more card added to the pool here, though you probably weren't playing it back then as it was exceedingly rare and worth a fortune. The first ever SJC prize card hit the format in December 2004, being Cyberstein, who could pay 5,000 life points to special summon any fusion from the extra deck. This card was heavily speculated on, but for the time being wouldn't see play, as the fusions of the format were rather lackluster to blow 5,000 on. But he would get his time to shine in a couple of formats when newer fusions got released. With all of that covered, what are the meta decks of the final DM format? Interestingly enough, there's a shocking amount of diversity here. Warrior would be one of the mainstays, being the namesake of the format. Focus on the interactions around Rhoda being semi-limited and DD Warrior Lady not even being on the list. In addition, the Warrior pool at this stage was decently diverse, including Don Zalug, Blade Knight, Exiled Force, Gear Freed, DD Assailant, and Mystic Swordsman providing substantial options for searching. In addition to Warrior, Chaos would still have a good foot in the format with the limited BLS and the untouched Chaos Sorcerer. Chaos Control variants in the newer Chaos Return, taking advantage of Return from the Different Dimension, were heavily popularized here. There's also a lot of other decks popular here, like Earthbeat, Water Control, Chaos Turbo, Goat Control, and Scientist FTK, just to name a few. So much so that many of the innovations here, you wouldn't be blamed for looping them into the next format, as Warrior Format's younger brother that followed is by far and away more remembered. Here are some lists from recent format library tournaments, such as Jazz's Water, Alita Can's Anti-Meta Stun, and Aretos' Gear Free to get you started into the format. Without a doubt, Warrior Format has a lot of diversity in it and should absolutely be explored further with time, though many do pass it up for the elephant in the room. As this was the last DM era format, the GX era was about to begin, and with it would come what is unquestionably the most popular and most explored format in the game's long history. So much so that I'm positive you know its name without me having to say it.